It's a veritable fairyland. <laughs> oh, transported for another world for a minute. <laughs> I can hardly contain my gasps of wonder and amazement. Ooh! <laughs> oh! Oh, oh, oh. oh, it calls the splendor of Versailles during the reign of the Sun King. Are you taking the Arthur, please? No, no, no. <laughs> Lynn, it is quite magnificent. I, it's like Disneyland. The transformation scene from Cinderella. If I close my eyes, I can see the little fairy come through the window, leaving a trail of stardust behind her. And when you wished upon a star, <laughs> makes no difference who you are. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Get it all done. What's wrong with it? Tat. That's what's wrong with it. Tat. You've been putting up the same rubbish since I was five. Every year, hard it comes. Every year, the chains get shorter. We lose a foot off each end. Because you don't put them up properly. There's still some left there from five years ago. The bells is all frayed and stuck up with sellotape. It takes you as long to mend them as it does to put them up. The whole thing is tatty vulgar. Not only that, you've ruined the picture rails. There's more pinholes than woodworm holes in there. <laughs> the whole thing is pathetic. Uh, if I left it to you, we, we'd never get anything put up. We wouldn't have any decorations. Yeah, that's right. But what is the point of decorating this rat hole? It's like trying to grow daffodils on that dung heap out there. <laughs> I cannot disguise the sordidness of this sewer with a few coloured strips of paper. Well, it's only once a year. Yeah, that's another thing. Rest of the year, you never touch the place. It takes a bleeding excavation to find the floorboards. <laughs> but comes Christmas, out comes your little llama, up the ladder, bang, 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 I have, I have, hey, don't I have to go. Oh, stop, Jenny! Damn! 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 Down, down, down. You. Well, is that better? Does that suit you? Yup. Good. Because that's me finished. That's my Christmas over. I'm not doing any more. You can cook your own dinner. Crack your own nuts, pull your own crackers, because you're not getting anything more out of me. Good night. You're on your own, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Oh, well, because I won't be here. What did you say? I said I won't be here. Why? Where are you going? I don't know. I haven't quite made up my mind yet, but I'm going anywhere as long as it's not in this place. Oh, well. You do this every year. Yeah, I know. And every year you prevail, and I spend Christmas stuck in this hole. Well, not this year. I'm going anywhere. We always have a good time. We don't have a good time. Plenty to eat and drink. We have too much to eat and drink. That is not enjoying myself. That is boredom. One overeats and over drinks because one is bored. There's nothing else to do except stuff. Half raw turkey, tin Christmas pudding, and tepid custard down one's cake hole. Well, you can watch the telly. I don't want to watch the telly. I watch the telly every Christmas. Every day for three solid days. It's... Ah! Ah! <coughs> Watching the telly is the same as eating and drinking. What does it? Because one is born with Christmas. And all you get on the telly is Christmas stuffed down your cake hole. 
They all do something different for Christmas. Something special. There'll be Zed cars with Ollie stuck in their helmets. <laughs> Investigating a special Christmas crime. Someone found up an alleyway, battered to death with a Christmas pudding. <laughs> There'll be a Christmas Scylla, a Christmas Lulu, and a Christmas Muggeridge. <laughs> and I'll lay you a part of a penny that Cliff Richards will be singing Harvey Maria with a younger generation done up in habits. <laughs> Split to the crutch, of course. <laughs> There'll be a Christmas Coronation Street. Oh, the real party at the Rover's return. Albert Tatlock will be trying to have it away with Minnie Colwell down the coal cellar. <laughs> well, not anymore. I'm not going through all that for another year. I'm sorry, no. Well, I enjoy it. I like Christmas telly. All them stars giving up their Christmases just to entertain us. Well, they don't give up their Christmases. All them programmes is recorded in October. <laughs> When it comes Christmas, they're all away, sunning themselves in the side of France. Sounds that's not sat here in the freezing car watching them. Oh, you're so simple. Well, I'd sooner be simple like me than cynical like you. Everybody else enjoys Christmas. Well, perhaps they do. It's just our Christmases. I mean, you don't want to have anybody around, go anywhere, do anything, nothing. I'd have a better time in Dracula's castle. <laughs> Well, not anymore, because this time I'm going. And to show you how desperate I am, you can even come with me. I don't like going away at Christmas. Now, you have to stay here, won't you? I don't like staying here on my own. Now, you have to come with me, won't you? Look, you ain't going to talk me out of it, and you can have as many heart attacks as you like. <laughs> no. <laughs> they won't make any difference. <laughs> I'm going. I don't think I'd enjoy it, Harold. I you never know until you try it. Go on, give it a go. Do something different once in your life. Go on, live with it all. Go away. You think we can afford to go away? Well, of course we can. I've been totting it up. Now, we've got three pounds in the bank. We've got seven pounds in the building society. <laughs> and we have got 79 pounds 18 in the swear box. <laughs> Mine. No, it's not. You did the swearing, yeah, but I had to listen to it, so it's mine. <laughs> I mean, it's not, a, it's, not, it's not a savings bank, it's a penalty, isn't it? Ten people swear. If you think you're going on holiday with my bleeding £79.80, another thing coming. What £79.80? My bleeding! <laughs> oh, that's two bleedings at ten people time. I'm making a nice round 80 quid. Here you go. <laughs> rough, rough, thank you. Plus, I sod you then when you pull the decorations down. <laughs> I'll have a ten pee, please. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This should be enough here for a nice little Friday Christmas package for two. <laughs> you rotten little. Yeah, get yeah, go! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to stretch it out. You pull that. <laughs> Any more? No? <laughs> right. <sighs> sit, sit. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. The world is our oyster. I don't like oysters. Shut up. No. Let's see. Oh, yeah, what do you fancy? Do you uh, want to spend your Christmas eating your turkey in the canaries? Or perhaps you'd like to eat your canaries in the turkey? <laughs> <laughs> and the whole world to choose from is all there. Town stretches to paradise. What do you fancy? Bogner. <laughs> oh, well, let's see. No, I don't believe British Airways is still running a jumbo jet scheduled service to Bogner. No. <laughs> but if I can't stay here, I want to go to Bogner. Mrs. Boxwood's boarding house, right on the front. Lovely rooms. Bathroom on every landing. How would you know? He was only there a fortnight. Yes, <laughs> it was. And a grub. Of course, you don't half give you a right plate full. Yeah, yeah, she don't half give you a mouthful when you get in late and all. Oh. What's the matter with half past ten? It's not bad. What can you do after half past ten? Uh, exactly. In this country, nothing. I want to go broad tip of life. I want to get a old current bun on my bones. You can get current bun in Bogner. Not in December. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want proper sun all day long. I had no intention of spending my Christmas dragging myself along the seafront in a forced night holding onto the railings. 
I still got a photograph we had taken last time. Yes, here we are. In a sou'wester with a spokes of my umbrella stuck up in the air. And no canvas. That all disappeared the moment she shoved us out of the front door to over the dining room. Nothing, Kim. Well, what then? Well, that's what we're just not on for, so we can have a look. There's lots to choose from. Here, yeah, look at this. Out as you fancy, I could pull cow. Nobody's sticking no needles into me. <laughs> pull cow! You daft little... <laughs> Don't you dare speak to your father like that. Well, you are a stupid little... <laughs> I made my life... Acapulco is in Mexico. I swing it there, Dad. I mean, that's where Frank Sinatra goes. Ah, oh, those bronze, lithe bodies in their bikinis. <laughs> Laying out on the swimming pool, on your lilo, having your drinks floated out to you. I bet a quarter brown ale wouldn't float very far. <laughs> I'm talking about Acapulco. You ain't gonna get quarters of brown ale floating about all over their swimming pools. Tequila! That's a drink down there. A damp and salt round the edge of the glass, and a twist of lemon over the side. Ugh. <laughs> lemon and salt? Uh, It'd shrink my mouth up. I wouldn't be able to get my teeth back in after one of them. God. You're so plebeian, aren't you? That's a swear word. No, it's not. <laughs> it means a member of the lower order of society. Class five. <laughs> what the do you think you are then? When I've got my decent clubber on, I'm completely classless. I mean, providing I don't open my mouth, I could pass for anybody. <laughs> right, so we can give our Capulco the elbow, can we? Yeah, it's too much money anyway. Kenya. <coughs> oh, that's nice. We can't go on safari. Big guy hunting. I can do that up in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> You're not being very helpful, are you? Oh, well, you're so full of big ideas, aren't you? Kenya, acupuncture I don't know where you get them. I never went to them places. Hop picking was as far as I got, and I had to work hard and I got there. I worked harder on my holidays than I did back here. My fingers were green for a fortnight after I got home. Yeah? Well, I want my bum brown for a fortnight when I get home. <laughs> I, I, I admit that Acapulco and Kenya may be a trifle ambitious. <gasps> yeah. We could certainly go anywhere in Europe. How about France? Here, yeah, four days, 40 quid. We can manage that. No. I spent Christmas in France. Twice during the First World War. <laughs> Horrible place. Full of holes and mud. <laughs> not now, eh? It's not like that all the time. After you lot finished, they filled them all in. <laughs> I don't want to go to France, Harold. It'll bring back too many bad memories. No, I'm not talking about northern France. I'm talking about the Riviera. Or the Alps. <gasps> Christmas in the snow. Are oh, those little ski villages nestling against the mountain side? The clean air. The blue skies. The sun. The broken legs. The broken... <laughs> No! Yeah, we're not going skiing. We're going for the parties afterwards. The Epway ski. You've heard about it. Hot drinks in front of a log fire, chatting up all the birds from all over Europe. Je them. <laughs> and Shuligans. Also Buco. Yeah, I'll wear that red sweater what you knitted for me, and I can pretend to be a ski instructor, and I'll pull me hamstring. Yeah, it's about the only thing you will pull. <laughs> What's gonna happen to me when all this is going on? Oh, you'll be all right. We'll find someone for you. Some rich old boot from Bavaria. <laughs> now, there's loads of them. The old men are slaving away in the car factories. They bung the old woman up into the mountains. You'll be quidzing. <gasps> We can pretend that you are an English lord and you've gone out there to purchase a mountain chateau to get away from the wealth tax back home. Rough, rough, down, down, here, boy. It's not an income tax collector, it's only an old Swiss peasant. You live in a dream world, don't you? 
Well, it's better than this place. Hold up, Dad. We'll be the centre of interest. When they find out we're in English, we'll be the centre of interest, all right. They'll all be reading their newspapers to see what tour firm has collapsed. <laughs> and then they'll be standing around watching us getting aimed out the whole door with our bags after us. They'll have to dig us out of a snowdrift. Don't you read the papers? It's a joke to be British abroad these days. That's what it is. Humiliating. What would the money and the football fans? Now, let's go to Bogner. We'll be all right there. We're all they've got. We're not going to Bogner. Well, we don't have to be British. We can be Australian. Yeah, you can do an Australian accent. I see, see. Hello there, Sheila, you little beaut. <laughs> and just shoot to Europe on a bonds of tour before we get back to the Al Sheep station. Rough, rough, shut your face, you great <laughs> Listen, you fancy getting your hands around a tube of uh, lard, but I've got a case of Foster's up in the bedroom, you know what I'm like? What a liver tumble! If you think I'm going to spend four days walking around talking like that, you're mistaken. I'm British and proud of it. And just not having a load of white wogs laughing at us. <laughs> well, there must be somewhere we're welcome. Holland. Yeah, they like us. You can't ski there. You'd never get the speed up. <laughs> Flat as a, a witch's tit it is there. <laughs> But I got skating, Val, on their canals. We can skate on our canal. It's only 20 yards away. Jab, you can't rely on it, can you? Remember, it's the last time the Grand Union Canal froze over. Anyway, it's not the same thing. In Amsterdam, they don't have to keep jumping over old mattresses and bicycle frames. <laughs> I am not pretending to be an, an Australian. All right, then. I'll tell you what. You can't be Scottish. With all that oil coming ashore and your heather-clad lend. I can't do a Scottish accent. I'd tell you about Oxford. It sounds like a done, didn't it? Oh, I'll do it, I'm bleeding like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to bother. Neither do I. Let's stay here. We're not staying here. Well, you've got all these lovely places to choose from. Well, but it might be somewhere what you fancy. The Black Sea. Ew! <laughs> that was so dark. They're not really black. There might be no view of swimming in it. <laughs> I'm told it's very nice out there. Where is it? It's in Russia. In the Crimea. Here you are. Four days at the Workers' Palace Hotel. 43 quid. No, I don't go back to Russia. Oh, God, get out of here. You ain't never been to Russia. Yes, I am. When? 1919. <laughs> Don't tell me you was Isadora Duncan's dancing partner. <laughs> no. A secret agent. 003 and a half. The mighty midget. The smallest boy in the West. Sent out there to photograph the secret Russian junkyards. They couldn't catch him, the scarlet pimple. <laughs> they think he wear, they think he wear. Joe Stalin sees him everywhere. <laughs> Untraceable in the snowy wastes. <laughs> because his head never come above his footprints. <laughs> In there, mate. British Expeditionary Force to Archangel. I was helping the white Russians to put down the Bolsheviks. I was fighting for me country. You was fighting against the workers. You're a traitor to your class. I'm not a worker. That's true. <laughs> no, I don't go back there, Harold. There's a ring round me name. If they find out I've been fighting against them, they'll put me up against the wall and shoot me. I'll go and book the ticket. <laughs> I am not going behind the Iron Curtain. I'm not going to give no money to no communists so they can build up their economy and take us all over. Oh, yeah, the profit from your 43 quid's got to go quite a few intercontinental ballistic missiles, isn't it? <laughs> Every little helps. I am not going. <laughs> oh. Sweden and Denmark? Yeah. Oh, you would like Denmark. They have live sex shows out there. <laughs> Get away. Have I do? You mean they, they actually... 
on the stage, everybody looking. <laughs> Not over Christmas, surely. <laughs> of course I do. I stay equivalent of pantomime. <laughs> I do the same stories as us. I like do Cinderella, spelt with an S. <laughs> Our buttons isn't in it. It takes too long to undo. <laughs> Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> Puss in kinky boots. <laughs> You're having me off. Oh, Where do you want to go? I'm not going anywhere dirty. Not over Christmas. I want somewhere clean, <laughs> wholesome, and respectable. How about four days in a lawn dret in Cheltenham? <laughs> Honestly, you let me laugh with you. I pick a fool all over the shelf to get out of this country. You've got all these wonderful places to choose from. You're so xenophobic. I am not. I just don't like foreigners. <laughs> well, you better make up your mind, because I'm going, with or without you. It's up to you. It's either Christmas here, on your own, Cold, miserable, lonely. Or Christmas abroad! Ha! Miserable and lonely. Because I won't say anything of you. I know you. The minute that suitcase hits the bed, you'll be off. Like a fillet up a trouser leg. <laughs> <laughs> Sniffing out the local dolly clackets. <laughs> and I'll be left trudging up and down Majorca High Street on my own. Majorca! That's where you want to go! No! I don't want me pudding boiled in olive oil. <laughs> Where do you want to call it? I don't mind. Belgium. No. Oh, no, you can't have nothing against Belgium. They never done no harm to anybody. <coughs> we'll go to Brussels. No. Why not? And if you tell me because you don't like sprouts, I'll kill you. <laughs> I can't go to Brussels. The police are still looking for me. <laughs> Since when? 1918. They're still looking for you, won't they? Oh, yes, they will. They'll never forgive me. No. The army had to smuggle me out. <laughs> I'm persona non grata. Ah, uh, no, this is silly. What did you do? Well, you know that little statue in Brussels of the little boy having a Jimmy Riddle? <laughs> The mannequin piece. Yeah, that's it. Well, you know, it's a tradition that all the regiments that go there present him with a suit of clothes. Yes. Yeah. Well, when our regiment was there, we had a big parade in front of the statue. And there was our commanding officer and, and the King of the Belgians and the Lord Mayor of Brussels. Oh, go on. W what did you do? Well, it was only a joke. <laughs> well, what did you do? I didn't mean anything. What did you do? I turned on the little boy's water pressure full. <laughs> Knocked the mayor's hat off. <laughs> no, I can't go back there. Now, where do you want to go? I don't mind. Oh, my God's sake! I have picked somewhere. If you want to come, you can come. If you don't, you can stay in, right? Now, I'm going to put these brochures all out, all over the table. What closes my eyes? Well, choose one at random, just like that. <coughs> we lost. Switzerland. If you got anything against that, and don't tell me the International Red Cross is after you. <laughs> now, I can go to Switzerland. That's all right. That's settling. Yeah. Christmas in Switzerland? Yeah. Well, thank God for that. <laughs> it's taken as long to make up our minds as it will to get there. Hey? What do you mean? We're not flying. No, we're swimming. Well, of course we're flying. Oh, no, Harold, I can't fly. I'm too old. You don't have to pilot the thing. You just go sit there. Well, you can say what you like, do what you like. I'm not flying. All right, we'll go by train and boat. No, I'm not going by boat in this weather. I'd be sick. <laughs> now, let's go to Bogner. We're not going to Bogner. We're going to Switzerland on the night ferry. You won't even know you're crossing the channel, because you'll be on a train asleep. They don't put the train on the boat. Oh, of course they do. It'll be too heavy, it'll sink. No, I won't <laughs> You will be lying on your bunk, on the train, on the boat, spark out. How can you be sure? 
Because I'm absolutely certain that before the train reaches Dover, I will have belted you one. <laughs> this was in Switzerland. Right? Right. Night ferry? I suppose so. <coughs> Good. Right, now, uh, where's your passport? I haven't got one. <laughs> Why have we been sitting here all night talking about going to Broadfording? I haven't. You have. I want to go to Bognor. Bring up the Bognor! Oh, we'll have to get you an emergency passport. Now, I shall need a photograph and uh, your birth certificate. Yes. Where, where's your birth certificate? With me medals. Uh, where, where's your medals? With me marriage certificate. Where's your marriage certificate? With me insurance policy. Where's your insurance policy? I don't know, I've lost it. Let me go! <laughs> you want before you get to Victoria? <laughs> when did you last see it? Under the goldfish bowl. <laughs> when? 1939. <laughs> then when the blitz started, I put it somewhere safe. Did you hear that, Charlie? He put it somewhere safe. Have you seen it, Charlie? Somewhere safe. In here. That's very reasonable. Where? Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> Naturally. Well, it won't be up in the attic. That's not safe, even today. We ain't got a cellar. Now, wait a minute. Now, where did we used to go during the height of the bombing in the Blitz? Down the pub. No, 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 no. You, you used to go down the pub. Where did you used to put me? Under the stairs. That's it. Under the stairs. Every night. On my own. It's another thing I've never forgiven you. That's a safer place now, that is. You always saw the stairs left standing. Exactly. So I suggest that is the first place where we look. Go on. Get in there. It's dark, Carol. Yeah. It was during the war as well. Go on. Here you go. <laughs> I don't want to go in there, Harold. We don't know what's in there. Exactly. There might be treasures, I'm told. Here, you, you think of yourself as a new Lord Cardigan. I'm leaving a tomb of two ten car men. Go on, get him. No, I don't want to. Get him. No, I don't want to go. Get him. Get him. Get him. Might be mice in there. <laughs> what do you want? A chair and a whip? Go on, get him. <laughs> be careful of those spitting gaboon vipers, Garothers. Oh, get stuffed. <laughs> Have you broken through to me in a tomb yet? Oh, beyond my wildest dreams. <laughs> Thank God the tomb robbers didn't get there before us. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. It's the king's leg! <laughs> See if you can find the rest of him, Carabas, we'll put him on display at the British Museum. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. What have we here? Aha! Hieroglyphics! Oh. Ministry of Food Ration Book. A strange annotations. Eggs meet points. What can it mean? Oh, God, if only we had the Rosetta Stone, we could interpret. It must be religious. I'll crack this coat, Carabas, if it's the last thing I do. Oh, my number nine buff! <laughs> ah, I need to play with this for hours in there. <laughs> I always wanted to be a conductor. <laughs> now standing on top. Moving on, God, please. One, two, three, four, five. You, oh. <laughs> Give me another one along in a minute. 
Ding, ding. Last bus for the depot. <laughs> what are you doing out there, you stupid great kid? Nothing. I was just... Have you found them yet? No. Well, go on, get back in there. They're not in here. Let's forget it, Harold. Let's go to Bognor. Well, I've got a problem. Go on, get in there. You ain't coming out till you find them. I found them, I found them. All right, you can come out in. You're in here. Harold Stepter, six and seven eighths. <laughs> Couldn't afford the rest of the uniform. <laughs> oh, no. Grubbs Line Elementary School. <laughs> Accipe locum gratis. Know thy place and be grateful. What a contract. Right. <laughs> oh. Wireless receiving license. 1938. So to date? Yeah. Never mind. It's the most up-to-date one we've got. Skinner's Arms Christmas Club. January 1936. Sixpence a week. Drawn out February. <laughs> that must have been a good Christmas. <laughs> the Scottish Widows Mutual Insurance Company. A penny a week? Yeah. I took that out for you. In case you died, it didn't cost you anything. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cashed in 1942. Yeah, that was the year you had scarlet fever. You was very ill, Harold. I thought you was going. I bet the money went. Ah, <laughs> oh, the birth certificate. All the sordid details. Uh, give us that, that's mine. Hello, that's hello, with you. Hello, hello. What is he trying to hide? Huh? Huh? 26th of September, 1899. So that's it. That's what the mood has been about. Yeah. You're older than you said you was. Yeah. You always told me you were 72 and you lied about your age to get into the army. Yeah, we'll give it to you. Yeah, well, when and where born, 23 Old Drum Lane, yeah. Uh, name, Albert Lady Smith stepped to, yeah, that's right. Boy, <laughs> never. <laughs> no, it's never a boy. I can't even imagine you as a baby. I bet you look like that since you was born. <laughs> that was now Victoria Alexandria stepped up. What's a nice name. Now, give us a day. Uh, occupation, domestic servant, <laughs> father. I don't believe it. Unknown. <laughs> My father is a... <laughs> what did you tell me before? Why should I? Mean, I... Could you trust me? I'm your own son. Oh, you think I'd run away from home or something? Why did you tell me? Why should I tell you? Why should I tell anyone? It wasn't my fault. Nobody asked me. Get <laughs> the lies and the pretense. You tell me your father started this firm. Step to and son. Well, it was step to and son. You never said it was Mrs. Step to and son. <laughs> I feel strangely let down. And another thing. That's my granny. Your mother. Well, who's that? 
Where's the bloke I've been calling Granddad all of these years? <laughs> Come on. Who is it? Well, if you must know. Yes. It's Gladstone. <laughs> Put up someone. Glad, you just how big it you are. You could put up any old dog's body. How the hell? You have to go put up a prime minister. <laughs> Can't be putting up Winston Churchill. Well, you didn't have to, did you? You've got a father. I'd rather have had Winston Churchill. <laughs> I've had enough blood, sweat, and tears all of these years. What didn't you tell me before? It was not the kind of thing you go shouting about. At least it wasn't in them days. It was a big disgrace to be born out of wedlock then. Not like today. All these film actresses having Dixie lids all over and boasting about it. <laughs> to be born a child of love in 1899 was a stigma. How funny. I never thought of you as a child of love. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you haven't got a face for it. <laughs> Surely your mother must have known who your father was. I don't know. She never let on. She always used to say, Daddy'd gone to meet the angel. Oh. <laughs> All the same, she must have been a brave old girl, <coughs> Granny. I think that was an hard life, then. I mean, they didn't have no national health, no aftercare, no orange juice. She must have lost her job. Yeah, I bet they booted her out the minute you started appearing. Oh, they did. That's when she came here. Eighty pounds she paid for it. She was robbed. <laughs> Wonder who he was. Your father. Where did she work? Belgrave Square. Lord and Lady somebody or other. I bet it was him! You could be the son of a lord! No, no, it's possible. I mean, they was always doing that, the aristocracy, putting domestics up the duff. <laughs> that was even part of perks in them days. Well, that's what she got the money for, to keep her quiet. Yeah, let's have a look at you. Yeah. Yes, it's possible. Aristocratic cock. <laughs> yeah, that's a good chin, when you got your teeth in. Ah, oh, there's breathing in there. It's possible. I could beat the grandson of a lord. It, we could be related to royalty. To 1415 line or something. Hey, it's possible. No, I don't think so, Harold. It sounds nice, but I don't think so. How do you know? Well, I don't. I remember when I was ten year old, Mum didn't half cry when the muffin man died. <laughs> Muffin, mate. Yeah. They used to go around with trays on their heads ringing bells. And when it was raining, they used to go into somebody's kitchen for a cup of tea. To stop their muffins getting wet. That's right. I think it must have been the muffin man. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Now, I've come to think of it, your head is a little bit flat on the top. <laughs> Occupational genetics. Oh, well, there's another bubble prick. So, I don't think it'll stop you getting a passport. No, no. Do let anybody go abroad these days. I'm looking forward to it now. Now it's all come out, it's a great weight off my mind. We might even get to know each other a bit better, Harold. Now we've no secrets between us. We're going to have a good time, aren't we, Harold? <laughs> yeah, of course we are. <laughs> I tell you what, you sit there. I'll, uh, I'll take your... Photograph for the passport picture. <coughs> right, just sit there. Just the head and the shoulders. It won't, uh, it won't hurt. You'll be all right. Right, here we go. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, hold that. That's not. Turn the cigar like that. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now sit still. Do you want my teeth in or out? I should leave them in. You don't want to frighten a man to death when he arms in here. Oh, God, no. <laughs> this, this, 
Nasty uh, passport picture. He's not a fan photo. Go on. That's giving you a normal blank expression. I'd like to hold it. Lovely. Right. Oh, my old man, a dum dum. Fought in the Battle of Mons. He killed 10,000 Germans with only 15 bombs. Some lay here, some lay down, some lay round the corner. I want poor soul with a bullet up his knee. Right. <laughs> relax, relax, now it's all, it's all over. <laughs> here you are. Yeah, nearly. That's what happens when a muffin man has a bit of grumpy. <laughs> I think I better take one of the skillet, man. Come on, Harold. Look at the time. I told you we should have left earlier. We'll be all right. Don't worry. It's over 11 o'clock. We wake up in Paris. We'll be in Switzerland tomorrow night. If we miss the train, it'll be your fault. If we miss the train, we'll go to Bogner. <laughs> Not me, mate. I'm going to enjoy myself. I admit I didn't want to go at first, but I'm looking forward to it now. You got your Swiss francs? Yeah. And your traveller's check? Yeah. All right, go on, Lynn. Good evening, sir. Just in time. British National? British? Listen, mate, the last time I was on this station, I had a rifle over my shoulder on my way to Mons. Fifteen years old, I was. I lied about my age. Oh, God, that's right. That's I see, right. sir. Uh, your passport, please. There's nothing wrong with that. Brand new. And it says, without let or hindrance, and that includes you. <laughs> Have a good Christmas, sir. I will. I'm going to Switzerland, mate. Blue skies, snow, sun. Better than this poxy weather you'll be getting. I hope you enjoy yourself. Oh, well, don't you worry. British National? Yes. Your passport, please. Come on, Harold. There is something wrong. His passport, sir. It's a year out of date. <laughs> no, it can't be. Date of expiry, October the 23rd, 1973. South? No! Come on, Harold! My passport's out of date! You dozy great pillock! Bang him a quid. He's too worried about you! Oh, don't blame me, it's not my fault. You better get a move on, sir. You'll miss the train. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll uh, uh, see you after Christmas, Harold. Uh, 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 uh. I shouldn't go if I were you, sir. You can't go without me. Sir. There's no food in the house, is there? No point in wasting two tickets. It's only four days. You selfish little. <laughs> Your birth certificate was right. Look, I must be going now, Harold. I'll see you when I come back. You'll be all right. Go down to the pub. They'll feed you. Put it on the slate. <laughs> Get a new one. Merry Christmas, sir. Thank you.
Vamos a unos. 